Hello and welcome, to this look at the newly released Affinity Photo version 2. I will be looking, at the iPad version, and what has changed from version 1. This is a look at the more basic functions of Affinity Photo 2, rather than the major updates, and new features. The tutorial is aimed at those new to Affinity Photo 2, but more importantly, those upgrading from Affinity Photo version 1. The update to Affinity Photo 2, on all formats, which includes the PC, Mac, and iPad versions. Is that all version 2 apps, are programs, in their own right, so they do not overwrite version 1. This means, that when you install them, you will have all versions of Affinity Photo or Designer on your iPad. So, you can keep both versions or just uninstall version 1. I would advise, not uninstalling version 1, until you have checked that you have all the settings, as you want them, in version 2. The start screen of version 1, has a few small icons in the top right corner, which includes, the preferences menu cog. The main panel, has work in progress, plus a tutorial and a sample image. In version 2, there is a bar running down the left hand side, with some large icons for menu options. The bottom one is the preferences menu icon. The main panel, has some sample images for you to look at and check out, how they were edited. Preferences In version 1, when you selected the cog icon at the top of the start screen, it opened the preferences settings page. Running down the left hand side are 9 categories, each with its own icon, you can then select and access each category's own set of options. The only option I have changed, is in the general tab, and that is, turning on better support for PSD files. This will mean better compatibility with Photoshop's own file type. In version 2, when you select the Preferences cog icon, in the bottom left corner, rather than a full page, it opens a slightly smaller panel. Running down the left-hand side of this panel, are 10 categories, but with no icons attached. The extra category is called Link Services. I have not checked out what this does on the iPad or the PC, but it lists by default, Dropbox. So, I assume it will link to services like Dropbox that you may use, maybe Google Drive, if you set this up? I would advise, turning on the PSD support in version 2, at the very least. New Document How you create a new document, has also had a facelift. In version 1, you first have to select the plus sign icon, in the top right of the start screen. This takes you to another page, where there are many options to select from. With options like New Document, New from Clipboard, New from Template, Open from Cloud, etc. Selecting one of these options will then open the settings page for that option. After selecting, New Document, the screen that opens, looks pretty sparse of settings, as it's mainly drop-down menus. In version 2, you can select and hold the new icon, and a menu appears, allowing you to select what new item you want. Just tapping on the new icon, will open the new document settings. Version 2's, new document settings, are again, more of a panel rather than a full page. That said, although the panel is smaller, it visually has more options. On its left side is a list of all the types of document presets you can open. On the right side of the panel, is where the settings for the selected document can be altered if need be. Plus, under the list of new documents presets, on the left hand side, are some icons to save any new presets or categories of presets which will then be added to the list. User Interface Much like the PC version of Affinity Photo, Serif has updated the look of the iPad's user interface. The icons have been redesigned and some items and menus may not be where you expect them to be. When you start a new document or open an image, you will see the main editing interface. In the bottom right of the screen is a question mark icon. Pressing and holding this icon will display the names and functions of the interface menu icons. Another thing to note is, that apart from the home button, Running along the top of version 1 there are 8 menu icons. Document, Commands, Photo, Selections, Liquify, Develop, Tone Mapping, and Export. Version 2's main interface, and its menus and icons named. The first thing to note is there are 3 more tools icons on the left side of the interface, and one more on the right side of the interface. I have not delved too deeply, into this yet, but it might just be a case of extracting an older menu item and giving it, its own icon in the toolbar. In version 2, there are four menu icons, on the left and four on the right. The first icon is Persona, holding this icon will give you a drop-down menu, that will give you access to the photo, liquify, develop, tone mapping and export personas. So, the personas, 
that once had their own icon, now share one. Some of the Persona icons have been replaced in the interface with Zoom, Toggle Preview Mode, and Snapping. I have not checked out all the changes to the user interface when using certain options. But I will point out a couple I have noticed and I assume will react the same way in other menus within version 2. I opened a document in version 1 and then added some text. I then added some layer effects. The first thing to note is that the adjustment controls in version 1 are at the bottom of the interface. In version 2, some adjustment controls will be at the top of the interface and some are sliders on the left of the interface. I then selected the Move tool and open the Layers menu. You can see in this image, that at the top of version 1's interface, there are the main menu icons only. The Layers menu control panel, that I have opened is fairly basic visually. If you want things like Arrange, Alignment, Transform etc. you'd have to do this via the Transform Studio or maybe some other studio on the interface. I have made a similar document in version 2, and selected the Move tool, and open the Layers menu. You will see the Layers menu, is still fairly basic visually. But, there are a couple of minor tweaks. The main change is at the top of the interface. Between the main menu icons are now five new menu icons. These menus are Move Options, Arrange, Transform, Alignment, and Geometry. These added menu icons make it easier to do certain tasks, as you don't have to leave the Layers menu to access them. I would imagine this adding of extra menu icons will be true of most if not all, the tools and adjustment menus. I think that will do for now. I don't use the iPad version that much, so I haven't really looked too deeply into the changes. I will keep version 1 on the iPad for quite a while, I think, just in case I run into any problems I can't sort out in version 2. I would advise checking out any video tutorials made by Sarah for the iPad version. Plus some that may have been made by other tutorial makers. Thanks for your support and goodbye. Carl